So OS2 comes with this little boot manager utility. Um, it's configured during the installation if you do an advanced install of OS2. So OS2 3 and OS2 4. Um, or you can just run FDisk after it's installed. And what's brilliant is it's not like a boot manager where you can um, the boot menu chooses something different off of the same C drive. This actually has two C drives, two primary drives, and you choose which one you want. So you can see I've got a 200 meg FAT drive for DOS and I've got a 200 meg HPFS drive for OS2. So if I go into DOS, straight into DOS, raw, nothing running at all, run F disk, show my drives slightly confusing here I have a non DOS drive but that is actually the HPFS there's my C drive and I've also got an extra drive which is the um, extended drive sorry which is the D drive I can view that there so I have a C drive of 200 meg I have a D drive of 600 meg with an error oh whatever um, yeah and it's two fat drives now if I reboot it's best not to use the DOS F disk because it doesn't really know what's going on if I choose the other drive this time and boot into OS2 warp version 4 this lovely splash screen there let's take a minute to boot up this is run off a compact flash a one gig compact flash If I go here, hasn't quite finished booting yet. Go on. You'll see I have a C drive which definitely does not have DOS on it does not have Windows on it well, it's technically has a kind of a Windows on it um, but this is an HPFS drive of 200 meg and I have a D drive of you see D drive's fat drive it's got that same error on it 600 meg so I've got the same fat D drive on both OS's but a different C drive for each OS that keeps them extremely separate I get the benefits of HPFS the high performance file system for OS2 I'll get the compatible FAT for DOS 622 and Windows 3.11 but I also have a shared drive I can use between the two and they can both use it fine you'll see I've actually got some OS2 software installed let's say it's all done within FDisk in here you have a 1 meg boot manager which is that blue boot up screen then you have two primary drives and you set them to bootable so you create a partition you make there you go, make startable during the install you'll set one to installable add to boot manager menu and there we go you've got the two boot manager menus and then I've got the extra logical drive which is the D so nice and simple but I really like it
So what else we got in here? OS2 here. I've got the worst rendition of Canyon.mid you've ever known. And I've got to play it. Listen to that. Out of time, bad notes. It's just in general horrible. <laughs> it's got the worst version I've ever heard. But strangely, I can play normal sound effects fine. And I can even do um, the famous parrots, which play just fine. So OS2 obviously has its own applications. Um, I've got in here an old Netscape 4.6.1, a version of Zip, it has its own DOS and things, but you also have when it loads, there's my Windows 3.1. So it's fully compatible with running yeah, there's my C drive there's my D drive it's fully compatible with running 16-bit Windows 3 programs Windows 3 1 311 even so we've actually got 311 installed but this actually does its own version of the IBM copyrighted 3.1 but yeah has all your normal, all the normal tools you're used to. And you have OS2 window, which I showed just now, which is like the OS2 version of DOS. It's all slightly a bit different. And I've got Normal DOS. This is a bit more like DOS 6.2.2. Of course, it's OS 2. This is version 4.5. That's because I've applied the patches to this. Has a cool little bar along the top. Has like a CPU usage. That's shut down. What's this one? Search for things. Yeah. Lock the screen. And drives and printers and whatnot. It turns out there was quite a good selection of games actually released. Here's a classic. I don't know why. Why did that come up? Go away. Anyway, it's gone. <laughs> uh, this is a freebie one. Yeah. Only has one scenario. Hollywood with its uh, monster, isn't it? There you go. Complete with sound effects. Mm. It's just like mm. Simpsons City that we all mm. know and love. Mm. I won't play that now because I'll end up playing mm. it all night long. So you can see it's, it's very Windows-y, it's a little bit Windows 95-y, it's a bit Unix-y. It, um, yeah, I've got network working. 
sound works so how did I get the network and sound working so it's got a sound galaxy card in it now um, it's a Packard Bell branded thing it's actually a sound galaxy um, Pro 16 according to the ID markings on it but both DOS and OS2 detect it as a um, Wave Rider 32 that does not have um, a uh, daughter board on it but so you only get FM normal OPR3 FM synth but yeah apart from playing MIDI files in um, OS2 here it works really well so that's a quick intro anyway to um, OS2 warp obviously it's a bit of a failed operating system but up until not that long ago you could sometimes see OS2 on like cash machines and systems that require extreme stability uh, OS2 warp 4 I found pretty stable OS2 warp 3 I found was quite unstable to be honest and it wasn't very nice at all um, this is version 4 it's got the latest fix pack on it and yeah I can, I can do I can't play YouTube but is that going to load? it's going to show me up now oh go away on it. there we go Netscape from 1999 this would be nice for a Pentium but you got to remember it's only a 486 but yeah It's online. Let's just give you the shutdown sound and I'll show you what I've changed on the hardware. Right, it's a very nice little form. So this is one change you made. I got rid of that too fast a 36 speed CD drive and got this lovely creative um, dual or quad speed uh, it just matches the age of the machine so much better and I love the little MPC multimedia PC logo there um, that was a standard set back in mid 90s um, between Microsoft and a few others to uh, show you that your PC was multimedia capable And then inside I've got a new compact flash to ID adapter it's got the port on the back so I can easily get to that and change it in the future before it was stuffed under there the network card is the same but now on IQ 11 and this is the different sound card so it says it's an AZT2316 and the FCC ID says it's a Pro 16 whatever it is but you can see it's got Packard Bell stickers. It had a Packard Bell sticker on there as well, but I peeled it off. Um, yeah, there's the wavetable header, nothing on it. It's got some CD-ROM headers, but I'm obviously not using those. Um, but yeah, it works brilliantly. Works in DOS, works in Windows, works in OS2. So that is the extent of the hardware changes I've done since the part one. So one last thing to do is let's just do a few benchmarks to see how it performs.
and just to prove this sound card can play canyon.mid properly thank you for watching the second part of this 486 build off from IBM see you in the next one